tight squeeze there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us here today at Gila River Arena. My name is Rich Nairn, Vice President of Communications for the Arizona Coyotes. We'll start things off by introducing our head table. To my left is Coyotes President and CEO Anthony LeBlanc. Next to Anthony is Coyotes Alternate Governor Gary Drummond. Next to Gary is John Shika. And next to John is Coyotes Head Coach Dave Tippett. At this time, we will call upon Coyotes President and CEO Anthony LeBlanc for a very special announcement. Anthony? Thank you, Rich, and thank you for everyone for being here today. Today is an incredibly important and exciting day for the future of the Arizona Coyotes. I am excited and proud to announce the new structure for our Hockey Operations Department. Firstly, co-owner and alternate governor Gary Drummond will serve in the newly created role of President of Hockey Operations. John Chaika has been appointed the new General Manager of the Arizona Coyotes. And Dave Tippett will continue as Head Coach of the Coyotes, but will also take on a new role of Executive Vice President of Hockey. I'm also thrilled to announce that Coach Tippett has signed a five-year extension with the franchise. We will continue our search for an experienced assistant general manager, a role who will support the entire department, but in particular Dave and John. We are hopeful to have this position filled in time for the NHL entry draft on June 24th. Under the new structure, Mr. Drummond will oversee the Coyotes Hockey Operations Department and Coach Tippett will be involved in all player personnel decisions. Gary will encourage communication and collaboration between ownership, management, and coaching staff, and will serve as a catalyst to keeping all of our interests aligned. We believe that a change in leadership was needed in order to move our franchise to the next level. We plan to operate in a different manner and under a different overarching philosophy. As I said last month, this is about collaboration, communication, and the modernization of our entire processes. This structure, as I mentioned last month, will be very similar to what we have seen with our neighbors at the Arizona Cardinals, where the structure of ownership, management, and coaches work together collectively on all issues. Our head coach and our GM will work very closely on all player personnel decisions, and they will have the full support of Andy Barraway, Gary Drummond, myself, and the entire ownership group. With that, it is my pleasure to introduce my business partner and the new president of Hockey Operations, Gary Drummond. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. Uh, first off, I got up early this morning. I was reading the paper and saw Sarah and uh, Craig's article, and I almost went back to bed and canceled out on the press conference here. So anyways, uh, uh, <clears throat> I'm happy to be here. Uh, I want to thank Mr. Barraway and the ownership group for the opportunity they're giving me. I also want to acknowledge the N NHL, in particular Mr. Bettman. I think it's a wonderful institution and I'm very uh, honored and privileged to have a small role in that uh, organization. I think that uh, as the president's role of hockey ops is uh, different for different teams, I think you know, a number of teams don't have that designation. Some teams have a hockey personality that's, you know, got to learn the kind of the business world. You know, I'm from the business world and I'm learning the hockey world. So I don't think there's a, really a right or wrong way to uh, staff that position. I think it's totally dependent on the personalities involved in the organization that you have. And I think uh, my main role will be to you know, encourage communication and collaboration between the ownership group, management coaches, and even the core players to a degree. So um, my, my uh, expertise, I guess, obviously is not hockey per se. I think it's uh, really recognizing talent, establishing relationships, uh, and I've done that through my whole career, some 40 years. And as I was thinking this morning, they're, they're really, you know, in the business world, they're also kind of generational 
you know, players or superstars, whatever you want to call them. And in my years, I've, I've come across three of these young men that uh, I think qualified in my mind as being that. The first was my partner today, Mark Silver. I met him when, <clears throat> when he was 21, and we've been partners for 34 years and had a lot of uh, fun and a lot of financial success, I guess, if that's a measure. The second one is Sean Dim. He came and worked for us when he was a teenager right out of high school, and we ended up uh, you know, sponsoring him through university and through Harvard Business School. And he's been with us for about 20 years, I think. I'd like to say he's worked with us for 20 years, but I think we're basically working for him now. So, yeah. He, and then the third is uh, right here beside me, John Chaika. I, uh, I really think, in my view, he's he's of that quality, and that's why you know he's being appointed as he is at such a, an early age. So, I first met John. I think it was three years ago at the Memorial Cup in Saskatoon. And if you've been to Memorial Cups, you know there's lots of downtime. So I had several good visits with John, and, and I was tremendously impressed with uh, his maturity, you know, his vision, his uh, desire to be part of a winning organization, his business astuteness. Uh, just, I just thought he was an amazing young man. And I really, you know, didn't keep up with him to any extent until... Uh, I think it was, you know, March, February, March of 2015, we, we started chatting again about uh, the possibility of him coming to work for the Coyotes. And I think that it really got legs in Buffalo. We were playing there at the end of the year, and, and I arranged a meeting with uh, Don Maloney was not with the, the team that trip, so I arranged a meeting with Dave Tippett, and John came down from his southern Ontario home, and... I sat in on the meeting, and, and it was really, uh, went on for about two hours. I had very little to say, but I did a lot of listening, and, and it was just amazing, the, you know, the vision and the passion in all aspects of, uh, of hockey. It was, you know, from recruiting to player development to sports science to analytics and how do you apply those analytics to, you know, you name it. It was, uh, it was a real eye-opener for me and I realized you know how little I really knew about hockey at, at this level so um, then we fast forward to um, John got hired and and uh, you know here we are today and you know I couldn't be uh, more optimistic about the future of the organization you'll hear a lot of the details from coach Tippett and from John and um, you know Thanks for coming, and John, um, come on up here. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you to everyone uh, for being here today. I know it's short notice, so I appreciate everyone coming out. And, uh, you know, this is an exciting day for me, an exciting opportunity, and, uh, and one that I'm very grateful for and humbled. Uh, I believe it's important at times like these in life to, to take a chance to thank those people that have supported you along the way and, and helped you get here. And, uh, and first off, much gratitude to the ownership group uh, for believing in me, uh, and supporting me, and, and hiring me for this position uh, to get the job done here. Uh, I realize the high expectations of this group and have every intention on delivering on my part of the partnership, which is delivering a winning and a sustainable winner that this ownership group deserves. I want to thank my parents, uh, Terry and Mary Ann, uh, my sisters, Laura and Megan, my fiance, Catherine, for supporting me uh, throughout my career path. And I wouldn't be here without them. Uh, additionally, I'd like to thank Pat Brisson, uh, whose uh, intellectual curiosity, uh, his vision for what I was doing, uh, certainly got me started down this career path in the first place, and, and I thank him for that. Uh, lastly, I'm, I'm excited to partner with Dave Tippett on this venture and, uh, and appreciate the experience and knowledge that he brings to the game and has shared with me. And I think uh, you know people around the league that know Tip, uh, know we have a pretty special person here in Arizona and someone that's uh, going to do good things here. He's committed to doing that. Uh, it's an exciting time to be a part of the Arizona Coyotes. The positives are endless with respect 
to the vision and direction of our ownership group, to the influx of young, talented players that are going to excite our fans for, uh, for years to come. We're in the process of solidifying our hockey operations department to bring this team to the next level and build that sustainable uh, you know, team for the uh, foreseeable future. We'll have challenges along the way as we continue to grow, but we will rely on our increased communication, collaboration, and innovation to overcome these issues and achieve our goals. Uh, we're going to be open to using any and all tools available to us to help us make better decisions at the end of the day. You know, this includes traditional scouting, of course, statistical analysis, uh, psychological profiling, sports science, and, me and many others. Um, we have an excellent staff in place currently. Uh, we look forward to building out a league leading off ice hockey department. But the end goal is, uh, is very clear. Uh, it's to create a winning environment and destination that players want to play in. And again, that starts with winning. Uh, this is about the players and creating a model that's player centric. All excuses will be eliminated. We expect to be successful. We're going to pursue players that optimize the group and bring specific attributes to this team that will fit within TIP's uh, blueprint for success and structure. We'll be uh, disciplined, pragmatic, and exhaustive in our approach to improving this team and look forward to reaching our ultimate goal of winning a Stanley Cup. Thank you. Thanks, John, and congratulations. At this time, we'll open the floor for questions. Uh, if the media have a question, please raise your hand, and Greg or Jeffrey will hand, hand you a mic. We'll start with Craig Morgan from ArizonaSports.com. Craig? Two-part question for me. First off, I think the obvious question a lot of people are asking is, John's a young man, so what made you convinced that he was ready for this position this early in, in his uh, managerial career? And secondly, can you talk further about what the structure of this management staff looks like? Oh, thanks, Craig. Hello. Yeah, thanks, Craig. Um, I think, I think to a degree, I've I've tried to answer that already, but it's, uh, I think it it mainly is John's outstanding talent. You know, his uh, his vision and his his approach, his ability to communicate with uh, not only his contemporaries but real seasoned hockey people. Uh, I think that uh, his work ethic, uh, his, his ability to translate data, analytics, video into, you know, practical players that could, that we think have a high probability of working out for us. Uh, just, uh, just a whole host of, uh, of reasons. I think that uh, it's an important factor in the, in the organization that we will be hiring, you know, a very seasoned, uh, well-respected senior assistant GM that will work, that we feel will work, uh, you know, in, in conjunction with uh, Coach Tippett and with John. And it would bring that uh, balance, you know, between his youth and his approach to the game, along with, of course, the experience that only comes through passage of time. And um, maybe our secret weapon is that uh, <coughs> I think John is the youngest GM in the history of pro sports, and I think I'm probably the oldest guy that it, that's getting his first hockey job. So I think that balance between the two of us is excellent. Is that good? That was great. Uh, this is for John, John Richard Sines, Fox 10 Phoenix. Um, it, it's obvious you're going to have a support system along with you. You're not alone in, in this journey. How comforting is it and, and how nice is it to have this support system as you take on this expanded role? Thanks for the question. Uh, you know, certainly it's comforting, uh, and, and that's the model that we've used. But again, I think uh, maybe it's being overplayed to a degree. Of, of you look at across the league, I mean, management teams and and uh, hockey ops departments are expanding rapidly. Uh, this isn't a unique approach in terms of, of you know having a more flat uh, hierarchy in terms of uh, you know again we talk about communication collaboration. I, at the end of the day, the buck stops with me in terms of player personnel decisions, and obviously Tip's input on that as well and vision. But uh, but it's certainly, uh, you know, I'm not someone that's going to be uh, authoritarian in my views. I'm going to be very open and uh, and willing to share those ideas and and listen. And at the end of the day, the the key for me is the best idea wins. Uh, and so we're all about winning up here. 
uh, and that's the end goal. And so whether that comes from our most junior staff or whether that comes from our coaching staff or you know, medical staff, I mean, when you talk about those different departments, they're not you know, segmented, right? It's one whole, and that's the approach that we're taking. For NBC Phoenix, kind of curious when you hear that phrase "youngest player in the history of professional sports," is it mind-boggling, uh, mind-boggling, overwhelming? What's your emotion relative to that? Yeah, um, at the end of the day, I, I, I'm. It's certainly, like I said, exciting. Uh, it's humbling. It's something you feel certainly grateful for. But yeah, I think the real message is it's about the group always and. Uh, it's about uh, that group getting to the end goal of, of winning the Stanley Cup, and that's that's what goes through my mind more so is how can we build up the best possible infrastructure, uh, surround ourselves with the best, po hire the best possible talent to help us get to that end goal. And so again, I'm I'm a piece of that. Uh, it might be an important piece or a bigger piece, but it, but everyone to win, uh, we all know. It takes, again, even the most junior person to be uh, of, of exceptional talent to, to get to that uh, where we're trying to go to. Sarah McClellan, AZ Central Sports. Anthony, could you give us some insight into what this interview um, and search was like these last three weeks? Uh, when, you know, how many candidates did you interview if you could shed some light? And how did John emerge as the front runner or his process? What was that like? Um, <clears throat> thanks, Sarah. I'll probably turn it over to Gary. Uh, he, he would have more insight. Um, we've talked with uh, numerous people, uh, but I think it's fair to say that uh, y we didn't want to go into a process with our minds made up. We went into it with a, a very open mindset uh, of, of, you know, how this could look. But uh, I think it's fair to say, at least from both Gary and my perspective, that, uh, that John was definitely a leading candidate from the beginning. But uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Gary. He probably has better insight. Yeah, I think that... Uh, we had 10 to 12 candidates. I think we, at the start, we were quite open-minded to whether we were hiring a GM or whether we were hiring a, an experienced assistant GM. So we were always kind of looking at uh, at what the end result would be, what kind of a you know what kind of a management team would we end up with. We had uh, you know extensive interviews with one candidate and uh, you know couldn't come to terms. Uh, we have. Um, kind of a short list of three for this assist seasoned assistant GM's job, I guess. And, and as uh, somebody mentioned, uh, you know, with the playoffs still still on, uh, it's it's difficult in actually in all three of these circumstances. So um, I think it was really, you know, working backward from wanting to have a real balanced professional uh, management team that all had the same vision. And I, I wanted to point out, too, that when we say communicating and collaborating and all those kind of almost cliches, the, <clears throat> the thing is that doesn't mean that the management team won't, won't disagree because, you know, we all have the same vision, but we all, all have independent thoughts. And I think the key is really are we all open-minded to actually listening? And then once, once we resolve what our position is, then we move forward. You know, we don't look backward for uh, any excuses. We don't look for blame if it doesn't work out, and we don't look to cherry pick the success if it does. So I think that's, you know, that's what we're trying to accomplish. And I think that uh, Coach Tippett and John really fit fit well with that. And we and we really are going to take our time and get the right person to complete that top team. And again, in terms of ex of experience, I mean, we have some you know, tremendous experience throughout the organization, particularly, you know, our senior coaches, uh, Newell Brown and Jim Playfair. So, you know, if you look at the organization as a whole, <coughs> we're not at all concerned about uh, about experience. We, as uh, John said, I mean, the only measure in, in, any, in any sport really like this is, is, you know, are you winning? Are you competitive and are you going to win? And that's, that's all we're looking at. Jerry Brown, NHL.com. John, you have some young players that emerged this year, some probably young players also on the horizon that you're expecting to contribute. With that in mind, how active do you plan to be in this period leading into training camp? How active do the Coyotes need to be as far as putting together a team for next season? Yeah, as you mentioned, there's uh, there's a lot of positives here. And, uh, from our play on the ice, uh, even, even our veteran core, uh, I feel pretty strongly about some of the players that we have in place. 
obviously led by Shane Doan and, and a generational defenseman like uh, Oliver Ekman Larson. But uh, again, the, 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 the prospects or the younger players that came in and Anthony Duclair and Max Domi, who get a lot of the, high, you know, the highlights, but, but also Jordan Martinuk and, and Tobias Reeder, and then you're getting into you know, Connor Murphy, and I'm sure I'm going to miss some even. I mean, that's just that's the future of our team, and that's uh, exciting time. So I think uh, you know, what you were alluding more to was our prospects, and, uh, and certainly you know, we were rated the number one prospect uh, system by Hockey News, and I think that was probably well-deserving. I think our amateur scouting staff's done an exceptional job of uh, collecting some great young players and uh, prospects that we hope to convert to players. And so... I think as we work through things here, at the end of the day, we need to get better. I mean, we're picking seventh overall. I think it's, uh, you know, that's just the reality of it. Like I said, there's a lot of positives, but the reality is, is that we are picking seven for a reason, and that's not good enough. So uh, we're going to be aggressive. We're going to be active uh, to pursue as many opportunities as we can to improve our group, improve our team, and, and put the best group on the ice moving forward. Of course, you know, we're not going to sacrifice, uh, you know, the long term in terms of just short term. Uh, moves like that, but uh, we have, we'll have some options. We'll have some. Uh, I think it's a it's an interesting time in the league, and uh, I think there's some other you know other things that are going on that uh, that allow us to hopefully get some opportunities. And you got to get lucky, and and you got to find that willing partner to make the right deal. But we're certainly open to uh, to all those options. Hey, Dave, want to get your thoughts on working with John, your added responsibilities, and the contract extension. Well, first of all, it's everything that has been said here today, just the vision that, that uh, from ownership to John to our, our new management team moving forward were huge factors in, in the decision to sign a new contract and, and just to see the excitement within the organization and where it's going, um, you know, it's, it's, it's an honor to be a part of that. It's, I feel like I bring some coaching experience, some experience of being in the league between a player uh, in minor league management and, and in the NHL. So uh, I'm very excited uh, to work with everybody in the group. So um, when I sat back after the season, especially after the season before, it was a struggle. This year we made some good strides, but still a long way to go. But there's a lot of positives in this organization right now, and, uh, and I feel a bunch more coming. So uh, all those encompassed, I sat back and said, this is a great opportunity. Uh, it would be great to be part of a, a management team like this and led to a new uh, some contract discussions and uh, led to a group that I feel like will will work very well together and work hard to put a put a real contending team on the ice so it's uh, just the piece the pieces fell into place and it's I'm excited about the future of the organization okay John uh You've alluded to this already, but can you, what insights can you provide into what player evaluation looks like now with this new structure and with your background, without, of course, giving away state secrets? Yeah, I think, uh, honestly, I don't think, um, I think this year we've uh, we started that pro evolution of just, it's more about just taking a different way of, of looking at players at times and maybe taking a contrarian view and looking at, um, you know, instances and maybe we're, we're, we're missing something. But at the end of the day, uh, Again, we, I think we had a good staff in place. We had a good process in place, and I've come in and supplemented that and augmented it. And, uh, you know, we're going to be, like I said, there's a lot of tools out there available uh, for people that want to be open-minded and want to be uh, progressive, and that's certainly uh, kind of pillars of our approach here. And so, you know, I think top to bottom, whether it's coaching, whether it's uh, your trades, whether it's free agents, whether it's the draft, I think we all have to pursue opportunities to make better decisions and to try and find competitive advantages. And that's, that's more what we're about, is, uh, is finding any uh, edge or finding a unique way that, that fits our, our system, our, uh, our organization, and, uh, and helps us win. So, uh, you know, I don't think there's going to be this uh, huge overturn or uh, there's not going to be something that's groundbreaking in the sense of uh, publicly, but, but we're going to continue to tweak our system internally and, and do what we can to make better decisions. John, has becoming a GM, has that always been an ambition of yours? I, I know you played and you obviously had the background with staff leaves, but has this always been an ambition of yours? And if so, are you surprised that you've achieved this so quickly in your career? Yeah, I, I think it'd be um, 
kind of silly to suggest that I would uh, it was a goal at this age to be a general manager. I think you know a lot of times this uh, kind of states the opportunity, it's luck, it's timing. Uh, but I do think you know from a young age, just just a passion, kind of growing up a backyard on a rink, playing hockey and loving it. Um, you know, as you dream of being a player, you know that was always in my forefront of my mind. But just uh, you know the ability to work in the league and, and uh, think strategically about hockey decisions quickly became uh, a passion of mine. And, and so I had a playing career that uh, wasn't storied by any stretch, but, uh, but then I've quickly moved towards this, uh, this avenue. And then like I mentioned in my, uh, my announcement there is, you know, getting on board with Pat Brisson initially and just getting some traction and, and things, one thing led to another and, uh, you know, had a lot of success uh, building Stathletes is an exceptional company with great culture, great people. And, uh, and that has kind of led me to this next opportunity here. And so, uh, you know, I think it's just a confluence of events that, that ended up kind of today, but uh, never really, I would say, an end goal. Great. Well, uh, Anthony, I'm sorry to bring it back to this familiar place, but I <laughs> Are there any updates on the arena situation? Well, at least um, over the past couple of months, I've hit one of the timeline expectations that uh, that we outlined in regards to the hiring of a new GM. Um, w w there's been significant progress uh, in, in the past couple of weeks, and, and I, uh, I'd be remiss not to say that uh, I've been very impressed with, the, in particular, the leadership of Mayor Greg Stanton of the City of Phoenix. Uh, we've had uh, substantial discussions with the City of Phoenix over the past a uh, week to two weeks. Um, I've put out a, a you know kind of a, a soft timeline in the past, which of course just expired on on Sunday, I guess, uh, May first. But uh, what what that did provide is uh, allowed us to see where uh, you know who was really interested in a partnership um, and who wasn't in the good news. Uh, all of the groups that we've talked to fell into the latter, uh, which is that very interested in a partnership. Uh, I think it's fair to say that, and, and I've read, uh, as I say, I read social media way too much, and I've, I've seen all of the comments from the fan base that say, oh, please don't say two weeks. So I won't say two weeks. Uh, but I think it's fair to say that, um, uh, you know, maybe I should learn my lesson. I'll give myself a longer timeline. I'd be shocked if we get to the draft on June 24th without a significant announcement uh, in regards to uh, the new arena. Obviously, we're, we're, we're having uh, progressed discussions with a number of groups, but as I said, uh, and you can read into it what you want, we've been very impressed with the, uh, the leadership of Mayor Stanton and, and his staff at the City of Phoenix. We also haven't had a chance really to ask you about uh, reports that the city has taken a, I believe it's a $45 million loss on the arena. And that, and your thoughts on this AEG deal? Uh, Glendale says it's a better deal for for the city. I'm curious what your take is. <laughs> Um, maybe I'll start by saying uh, when I got together with uh, the folks from AEG last week, I opened by congratulating them because they struck a better deal with the city than I was able to. Um, you know, math is hard. I realize that, but uh, but unfortunately, uh, math is also pretty. <laughs> it, 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 it's it's a fairly easy thing to to just do the math, and you'll see that unfortunately for the taxpayers of the city of Glendale, they have a deal now uh, that they're about to enter into. And and by the way, I, I speak you know very highly of AEG. They're they're a tremendous organization. They're obviously part partners in the National Hockey League through their ownership of the Kings. Uh, but unfortunately, the math is pretty straightforward. Uh, the city is going to be paying a million dollars more a year uh, for this contract, and they have a guarantee of absolutely zero events. Uh, while with the Coyotes, they were paying a million less a year with a guarantee of 41 events. It's, it's unfortunate, but um, it is what it is, and uh, we've obviously moved on from, from that scenario. Uh, but it, and, and in regards to your question about the $45 million in losses, I mean, uh, that was just utter, utterly ridiculous, uh, a so-called newspaper putting out comments uh, that were not backed up by any fact. My favorite was the fact that they indicated that the Coyotes currently receive all of the sales tax uh, that the city of Glendale generates, which is just complete fabrication. But it's interesting because one of the biggest problems the city of Glendale has had is they never include the proceeds they receive from sales taxes in those calculations. So that $45 million didn't include any proceeds from uh, the last five years of sales tax generation, which, by the way, if you're a city government, that's one of your key economic drivers. It would be no different than me reporting revenues and not reporting ticket sales. Uh, but it is what it is. But you had to go there, didn't you? <laughs> uh, sorry to take an incredibly important, exciting day and, and bring us down to the weeds, but we'll, we'll blame our, our good friend Craig Morgan. <laughs> All right, let me try and take this back to, the, to John's hiring then. Uh, I think another question that a lot of people are wondering, now that a general manager is in place, there's a pretty important piece of the puzzle who's going to be a free agent very soon, Captain Shane Doan. Wondering what that process looks like right now, what you can tell us. 
Yeah, what I can tell you is uh, I think we could do a whole press conference on Shane Doan here if we really wanted to, just in terms of how special he is for our organization, what he's meant, and really outstanding, uh, outstanding person and outstanding player. And, and uh, so for me, first order of business is I actually have a lunch set up with Shane. And, uh, and again, you know, he's in the process of just finished playing and, and feeling where his body's at and talking to his family. And I think the sense is pretty positive overall, but, but certainly I want to talk to him and, and see where he's at. But, uh, you know, again, we'd be excited to have him back and, uh, and just, you know, the impact he can have on our, on our group uh, and the impact he has on the ice is, is exceptional. And, you know, it's got to be something that makes sense for him and makes sense for us. And, and uh, we'd, be, we'd be excited to have him. <laughs> <laughs> question anyone else sorry there's a uh, mic to your, to your right yeah uh, Dave Lemia with Fox Sports Arizona uh, Dave uh, I assume you wouldn't have taken this opportunity if uh, you didn't feel comfortable working with John can you kind of comment on the past year working with him and and what you've learned about him and what impresses you uh, in terms of that relationship well there's two things that that I've been very impressed with and um, John gets painted because of his age and because of the company he started, it gets painted with a very analytical brush. But what people are going to find out about John as he becomes well, uh, better known is he has, he's a very smart guy, a very intelligent guy. But that intelligence leads him to make sure that he has a balance where there's an analytical approach, but there's a common sense approach. And you know the, just his communication, the way he goes about carrying himself, his, his uh, relationships, all those things, as you get to know him, you're going to find out are top notch. And just as Gary uh, alluded to, there's, you know, I, we all get to meet a lot of people in the world, but there's some that you walk away and just strike you as just, hey, that guy is special. And I think Gary saw that in, in John. And over the last year, I've seen those things in John that really said, this guy is going to be a difference maker. And He's a, you know, when we have a team, a, a difference maker on your team, that makes everybody better. So that's, that's my feeling on John. I think he's going to be excellent. Next question? Any more questions? Last chance. Okay, this concludes the formal portion of our press conference. We're, we're going to do a quick photo op, and then all of our head table will be available for one-on-ones uh, to my left. Thank you very much.